Hi there and thank you for joining me. In this video we are mainly going to be talking about percentages because we are taking a look at the differences between simple and compound interest and we're going to look at some typical examples to see how we work through them. I hope you find it useful. So these are the two types of interest that we are likely to encounter and as the names suggest one is simpler than the other. Simple interest is quite straightforward, we'll cover that first. Compound is a little trickier and we need to take a little more time working that one out. I think it's best to say at this point that I'm not going to spend time in this video looking at all the different methods you can use to find percentages of amounts. I will be using the decimal method and also looking at the powers method for compound interest at the end. If you're not sure about finding percentage amounts, please do have a look at my video on that first. It will help you here and I'll put a link to that in the description to this video. So let's have a look quickly at simple interest. Here's an example of a question. Dan has borrowed £5,000 from a friend. He will pay the money back in one single payment in three years time. He will pay his friend 5% interest for each year that he borrows the money and we've been asked to calculate the total interest. So a simple situation, he's borrowed the money, in three years time he will simply repay the money back but whilst he is borrowing it he needs to pay the interest. So the first thing we do is find 5% interest for each year. As I said earlier, I'm going to use the decimal method to find the percentage. So we have £5,000 and we are going to multiply it by 0 0.05. That gives us 250. So the interest for one year is £250. That's how much he pays his friend. The reason this is simple interest is because quite simply he will pay the same amount for the second year and the same amount for the third year. Therefore to find out the total all we are doing is adding up the three years interest. So in total Dan will pay his friend £750. And that really is it for simple interest. You simply choose the method that you want to use to find the percentage of an amount. So if you want to use a fraction, if you want to break it down, find 10% and half it, if you want to use a decimal, all okay. Use the method, find the amount for one year. Now look at how many years there are. One, two, three. So you could simply have done 250 times the three years, 750 pounds. So let's move on to the more complicated compound interest. I'm going to start with a very simple situation just so that we can have a look at how compound interest works. Let's imagine that you want to put some money into a bank account and you have 5,000 pounds. Again, let's keep the maths very easy here. Let's say the bank is going to pay you 10% a year. So you put the money in and you keep your money in for a year. At the end of that year, they have to pay you the 10%. So 10% of 5,000 is 500 pounds. That means that at the end of the first year, you now have 5,000 500 pounds in your bank account. Now if you plan to leave that money longer, let's say for another year, the bank has to be fair to you because if that was year one, we are now going to start year two. But you don't have 5,000 pounds at the beginning of year two because of the interest that you've already been paid, you now have 5,000 500 pounds. Again, the bank is paying you 10%. This means that the interest this year is not 500 pounds. They have to pay you 10% of all your money, which is now 5,500. So 10% of 5,500 is 500 and 50 pounds and it's this extra 50 pounds that is the compound interest because it is extra interest 
because you now have more money in your bank account because of the interest you got the year before. So now we have to take your 5,500 and add 550. So now you don't have 6,000, you have 6,050 pounds. And of course that has to continue. If you are going to leave your money in for a third year, you are now going to start with 6,050 pounds. The bank is still paying 10%. Therefore, the interest that you're going to earn this year is going to be 10% of 6,050. So now you are going to earn 605 pounds. Therefore, at the end of third year, you have 6,050 plus your new interest of 605. So now you have 6,655 pounds. And this would continue for as long as you have the money in the account. Because your money is growing each year, then the amount of interest that you are going to earn will go up each year and your money will steadily grow faster and faster. That's the effect of compound interest. Now at this point, I am going to look at a couple of ways that you could do this. If I use the same method as I did in the previous page, I would be using decimals. So the first amount I would start with would be 5,000. So to find 10%, I would multiply by 0 0.1, and that would give me the 500, which I could then add on, so I get 5,500. I would then do the same again. I would then take 5,500, my answer, and I would multiply that by 0 0.1 and that would give me the 550 and so on. So you can start with the original amount, use the decimal method, multiply by 0 0.1, take your answer, multiply by 0 0.1 again, take your answer and continue that for as many years as you need to include. I actually do think that that method is perfectly valid and if you want to stick with that, you will not go wrong. However, there is a slightly shorter method which involves the use of a scientific calculator. For this method, we need to use powers. Now, the difference is that if we take the original amount, that is the £5,000, we need to do a calculation that is going to give us not 10%, but 110% because of course the amount you start with here is 100% you are adding 10 so you are finding 110% now the way to find 110% is to multiply it by 1.1 if you do that 5000 times 1.1 you will get 5500 However, a useful little tool, the scientific calculator allows you to work with powers. So using your own calculator, you actually put a power on the 1.1, which relates to the number of years. So for three years, it's 1.1 to the power of three. And if you do that, you will get 665. So the first thing you need to know is what you are multiplying your 5,000 by and then how to put in the power relating to the number of years. We'll have another look at that in this next example. Here's a very typical exam style question then. You've invested £8,000 in a bank account and this time it's paying 4% compound interest and it wants to know how much money there will be in four years. Let's have a look at this then. We are starting at the beginning of year one with £8,000. We want to know what 4% interest is. So we calculate 4% and that is £320. So at the end of the first year, we have £8,320. So when we go into the second year, we are in fact starting with 8,320 pounds. We now need to know 
what 4% of that is? And the answer is £332.80. So we need to add that on to our 8320. And it means at the end of the second year, we are going to have £8,652.80. We need to continue for another two years. So we've got beginning of year three, eight, six, five, two, and 80 pence. Again, we need to find 4% of that. In this case, we have decimals and we need to start rounding to two decimal places. The answer is three, four, six, and 11 pence. So if we add that onto our eight, six, five, two pounds, 80, we will get eight thousand nine hundred and ninety eight pounds ninety one pence our final year then we are going to start with eight nine nine eight point nine one and we're going to find four percent of that this time our interest is going to be three hundred and fifty nine pounds and ninety six pence Adding that on gives us a total at the end of the four years of 9358 and 87 pence. Again, I've rounded to two decimal places as would be appropriate for money. So we have made a calculation for each of the four years. We worked out 4% of the amount of money we had at the beginning of year one. We added it on. That started our year two, we found 4%, we added it on, which gives us our year three total, 4% add on until we get to the end of four years. Let's again have a look at this scientific calculator method. What we need to do is to start with our 8,000. The calculation we are going to do is to find 104% of that so we are going to multiply by 1.04. There are four years to be calculated. So the 1.04 is to the power four. And if you can remember this method, you will find the answer much simpler because it immediately gives you 9358 0.87. It really doesn't matter which method you use. If you prefer to work it out a year at a time, that is absolutely fine. The calculator using the power, if you are comfortable, will simply save you a little time. We now need to look at a slightly different situation. And that is where something is actually going down in value or depreciating. And typically questions like this often involve purchasing motor vehicles. Here's an example. Jack buys a car for £10,000. The car depreciates. It goes down in value by 10% each year. How much is it worth after four years? Now, again, in an example like this, we are actually using compound interest because the car depreciates by 10% of its value at the end of each year. Let me explain what I mean. He's bought the car. So its initial value at the beginning of year one is £10,000. Now, if it's going to depreciate by 10%, that means in the first year, well, 10% of 10,000 is 1,000. So it's going to go down in value by £1,000. So at the end of year one, it's only worth £9,000. Here's where it becomes similar to the bank account interest. At the beginning of year two, Jack now has a car which is worth £9,000. Again, it's going to depreciate at 10%, but 10% of 9,000 is only 900 it doesn't go down in actual value quite as much. So that at the end of the second year, it's 9,000 minus 900, it's now worth 8,100 pounds. So that has to be the starting point of our third year, 
8,100. 10% of that, this year it only loses value of 810 pounds, so that at the end of third year, its value is 7,290. We're now going into our final year that Jack has the car. It's now worth 7,290. It's therefore going to lose 729 pounds, 10% of its value. That makes its final value at the end of the four years, 6,561 pounds. So because the value of the car drops each year, then 10% of its value also drops each year and we come to a final value. Now again, there is a way to do this using powers. However, for depreciation, it's a little bit different. If you look at the first year, if we are losing 10%, then what we are left with is 90%. And that's the figure that you have to work with which is what confuses people. The actual calculation using a power is to start with the 10,000, multiply that not by the 10%, but by what is actually going to be left, which is the 90%. So we are multiplying it by 0 0.9, and then we're putting the power of four because of four years. And if you do that, you will get 6561. Again, if you want to embrace the scientific calculator and use the powers, feel free. If it looks a little over complicated, simply work out the amount each year. And that covers simple and compound. I think with this topic in particular, it's a good idea to find some exam questions and have a go at them. Don't forget simple interest just means you are simply paying a rate of interest each year and you add the years together. Compound interest, you have to work out the interest and add it on and it gives you a new total to start each year. I do keep emphasizing this but the powers method on a calculator is there if you feel brave enough to give it a go. If not, don't worry about it. And that's all for that topic. As I mentioned in the video, if you are not totally confident in working out your percentages, I have dropped the link to my video on that topic in the description down below. If you have found this useful, please do subscribe to my channel and hopefully I will see you again. Thank you.